assalamu alaikum in today's lecture we are going to start the directional overcurrent relays we have already covered the overcurrent relays and in these relays specifically we talked about the instantaneous relays instantaneous overcurrent relay idmt and D T O C. So this is inverse definite minimum time over current relay, and this is definite time over current relay. So we have talked about these three different type of over current relays in the previous lectures. Now we are going to talk about the scenario in which we have a doubly fed feeder, and by doubly fed I mean that we have uh, the power sources at both end of the network so we are having uh, current from two different sources of the network in order to provide that to the load so now in this case we are going to just talk about these two faults fa and fp fa is the fault that is occurring in this zone and fb is the fault that is occurring occurring in the line cd and the zone is defined by this oval in the case of fault FA, the current, the fault currents will be like this. The one part of the fault current will be flowing in this direction and that is from the generator 1 for example. So this is IFG1 and the other part of the fault current will be flowing from this direction and this will be IFG2. So this is your generator number two right so for fault a the circuit breaker four and five should operate but in this case the circuit breaker six can also operate because it is just close to the point where the fault is occurring so there is a chance that the fault current that is passing through this circuit breaker will be greater than the minimum fault current of this relay setting right so there is a chance due to IFG1 the circuit breaker 6 will also operate so to avoid this we have to use the directional overcurrent relays so we will be able to make sure that the fault is occurring in line BC it is not occurring in the line CD similarly for the fault FB the circuit breaker 6 and 7 should operate but 5 should not operate so in this case we should use 5 and 6 5 and 6 should be the directional relays we cannot use the simple overcurrent relays in this points in these points 5 and 6 so, so the relays that are attached with these two circuit breakers should be directional relays or it can be the overcurrent relay with directional element attached to that so this is the first scenario in which you can see that we require some directional element in order to distinguish between the faults that are within the zone or out of the zone then there is another thing we can easily make a guess from the bus bar as well like in the case of fault fa the fault current is moving away from the bus bar and the circuit breaker is attached closer to the bus bar so if the power or the current that is moving away from the bus bar then it means that the fault lies within the trip region within the trip region but if the fault current is moving towards the bus like is in this case for the circuit breaker 6 the fault power is moving towards the bus and I'm talking about this fault FA so for fault FA the fault power is moving towards the bus for circuit number 6 circuit breaker number 6 and it is moving away from the bus for circuit breaker number 
file so the relays that are attached to these two breakers will make a guess that uh, in the case of breaker number 5 the power is moving away from the bus so it lies within the zone of the circuit breaker 5 or relay 5 but in case of circuit breaker 6 the power is moving towards the bus so the fault lies in the restrained region similarly for fault B the current will be in this direction or fault power will be in this direction so for circuit breaker number 5 the power will be towards the bus but for circuit breaker number 6 it will be away from the bus so for this circuit breaker it will be within the trip region and for circuit breaker 5 it will be in the restrained region so we can make a guess from the power that is flowing towards the bus or away from the bus in order to check the directionality and then we are using the directional relays and uh, the direction cannot be only uh, judged from the currents that were being used in the overcurrent relays right so we were using the the ct currents as an input to the overcurrent relay but in this case we required another quantity that is voltage in order to calculate the fault power right so there is a common rule of thumb that can be derived from the previous discussion that if the fault power is moving away from the bus then the relay should trip like in this case if the power is moving away from the bus then this circuit breaker that is attached to relay R5 should operate in case of fault FA but if it is moving towards the bus like in the case of this circuit breaker and relay R6 the fault power is moving in this direction the relay should restrain it should not operate because the fault do not lie within the zone now another example is that uh, when we have a load that is attached to a bus bar and that bus bar is fed through two feeders two parallel feeders now in this case you can either have a fault in this line or in this line and there is a possibility that both the lines will trip if there is a fault in either of the line so in this case as well we require some directional relays so we will use the directional overcurrent relays at this point and this point because these are the circuit breakers which will have bi-directional flow of power in case of fault right so let's take an example in this case we have a fault in the second line which is bounded by two circuit breakers by three and four so if we have a fault in this line then for this breaker the fault power is moving away from the bus so this breaker should operate but for this circuit breaker too the fault power is moving towards the bus so it should not operate similarly if we have a fault in the other feeder the power through the circuit breaker number 3 is moving towards the bus and through circuit number 2 it is moving away from the bus so for this fault the circuit breaker number 3 should not operate because the power is moving towards the bus but the circuit breaker number 2 should operate because the power is moving away from the bus so the circuit breaker number 2 and 3 should be attached to a directional overcurrent relay in order to correctly identify the fault in the parallel feeders. Thank you.